does a Nobel Peace Prize always lead to peace? Just one year ago, Ethiopia's Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, was being hailed as a peacemaker for his landmark deal with bitter rival Eritrea. But now, his country is descending into civil war. The offensive comes after months of growing tensions between the federal government and Tigray's governing TPLF party. Hundreds have died in an escalating conflict in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region. Earlier this month, Nobel laureate Abiy Ahmed launched a military offensive against the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, which controls Ethiopia's northern regions. Abiy said the campaign was in response to an attack by Tigrayan fighters on a military base. According to the Prime Minister's own words, it was an unexpected war that would be short. But nearly two weeks in, it looks like an all-out war. Even the Nobel Committee called on all parties to end the escalating violence and to solve disagreements and conflicts by peaceful means. But some say the ingredients for a civil war had been brewing for years. You know, the Tigray region is, um, has a relatively well-armed um, and large security apparatus, uh, which it's been building up over the last couple of years. That has a sort of paramilitary characteristic to it. It also has a fairly large militia um, at the local level, you know, quite well drilled, full of experienced veterans. But why now? Why, after just one year of being awarded a Nobel Peace Prize, is Abby launching a war at home? It's essentially a power struggle that goes back decades. Despite making up only 6% of Ethiopia's 115 million people, the Tigrayans have long been a force in Ethiopian politics. The TPLF battled a military dictatorship for two decades before coming to power in 1991. Fast forward to 2018, where massive protests brought Abiy Ahmed to power. After becoming Prime Minister, Abiy moved quickly to shake up the country with a series of reforms. The TPLF say they feel politically marginalised and want more autonomy for the northern Tigray region. And when the central government suspended the country's first democratic elections earlier this year due to the coronavirus pandemic, tensions only worsened. The election raises concerns that the TPLF could be laying the groundwork to create a breakaway state with its own parliament and government. And in September, Tigrayans openly defied Abiy and went ahead and cast their ballots in regional elections. That was a red line for Abiy's government, who called the vote illegal. In a blunt violation of the constitution, TPLF adopted its own illegal electoral law an illegal electoral commission. But it wasn't until the TPLF allegedly attacked a government military base that triggered a response. Phone lines and internet connections have been cut off, so it's hard to know exactly what's happening in Tigray. The government says that it has taken back cities in the north and northwestern part of the Tigray region, with fighting still continuing in the southern part of Tigray around the city of Alamata, located about 120 kilometers south of the regional capital, Mekele. In a country as divided as Ethiopia, the rush to war has reopened ethnic wounds. And there are some signs things are about to get worse. Amnesty International is calling it a horrific tragedy. Scores and possibly hundreds of civilians have been stabbed and hacked to death. Full inquiry into possible war crimes in Ethiopia after reports emerged of a massacre of civilians in the Tigray region. And the UN has warned of a growing refugee crisis. So far, more than 30,000 people have fled the violence to neighboring Sudan and 200,000 more are expected to follow. The region is bracing for a humanitarian crisis that could destabilize an already fragile Horn of Africa. Humanitarian crisis in the making, according to the UN. 4,000 people crossing every day. As the conflict escalates, Abiy's reputation as a peacemaker is being questioned because while he was being praised for quashing disputes abroad, it seems he was readying to settle scores at home.